Well, as the death toll from the fires rises, so too does the injury toll. Ten people are fighting for their lives in hospital tonight, and nearly 80 victims are being treated, including two children and a firefighter. Sarah Farnsworth has been around to some of Melbourne's hospitals which are treating the injured. As the fires roared, Melbourne's Alfred Hospital put in place its disaster plan. With the Bali bombing, it was a similar sort of approach. Everybody was called in large numbers, and they would have burns and blast victims there. So that would be the only parallel that I can think of. Many patients have lost everything, including their loved ones. I've heard of you know, sad stories of flames going over cars, and maybe one person surviving and being brought in and the others not surviving. We're seeing families coming in. There's one particular name that features quite a bit, I'm afraid, three members from that family. Some of the badly burned waited for more than four hours before it was safe to fly them from the disaster areas. At one of the worst hit towns, the injured had to make their own way to a makeshift triage area as the paramedics struggled to reach them. Back at the hospital, staff braced themselves for more patients. It's not knowing what's going to come across, right? Yeah, we're just waiting. What's important to note is that the system is under some uh, stress, but we are coping well. This is an unprecedented uh, event in terms of the, the overall demand pressure. For many of the survivors, the ordeal isn't over. They'll be scarred for years. Their rehabilitation will take three, six, nine months, uh, multiple <coughs> procedures. The Red Cross is urging people to give blood to help the Burns victims. Sarah Farnsworth, ABC News, Melbourne.